Hello everybody and welcome to this video on Airbnb's Q3 2022 earnings. Um, and I want to spend a little time discussing Airbnb and why I think Airbnb is an even better investment as we see earnings quarter after quarter heading in the right direction. Um, let me just give you an update on revenue. So revenue year over year is up 31% with Airbnb. But that's because there's been a qu quite a big hit uh, from foreign exchange because the dollar, uh, the Dixie is so high right now. Actually, in, in constant dollar, if you exclude foreign exchange, growth is at 40%. And the growth of revenue of Airbnb is almost back to its pre-2020 levels. This was a company that was going at well above 50% revenue growth each year. And I believe it has the potential to continue growing at 50% as we move away from the events of 2020. Uh, and the contents of this call are all positive, all long-term. The CEO is highly focused on the future. Um, and of course, because of that, they got punished, right? The stock is down 11% right now. Um, because they're focused on the future, because they're investing in their future, because they have a grand vision. And the market right now, with its short-term interest rate debacle, only has interests in the next quarter. So let me just walk through uh, the conference call and why I believe the potential of this company is even greater and its growth is even greater going forward. Uh, than what it is. Uh, so prepared remarks is a 3.3 billion in free cash flow over the past 12 months. This is a company uh, that is a profitable company, nowhere near bankruptcy. It's an innovative company. It's a new company, but it's also a very strong and very stable company. Uh, and it's a record Q3 on all metrics. We keep seeing records for Airbnb. They've done 1 billion of buybacks, understandably, and understandably so. I have been buying the stock myself, not investment advice. But they have an over $1 billion in buyback that are authorized. And, you know, what do you think they're doing right now when after great earnings, uh, the stock is yet again down 10 to 11%. Uh, they're probably buying back stock, um, you know, within the, within the next few months. They're probably going to keep buying back their stocks, um, which is a great sign. The company really believes in itself. Um, let me go through the remarks. So... The recovery from the events of 2020 continues. Uh, bookings keep going back to, to normal growth. So not only have bookings grown, but there's also pent up demand that is still coming back, still coming back and still exploding revenue, exploding earnings. So they've had 90 million bookings in one quarter alone, 90 million. That's tremendous. Bookings and experiences booked are up 25% over, over quarter, quarter over quarter. In Q4, um, they're running out of quote unquote rooms for Q4. So now they're doing things to like head them in towards what's available um, because they have Q4, Q4 is almost fully booked. So this is a company that has a lot of demand. There's not only the organic growth, which I estimate to be at 50% for Airbnb year over year, but there's also growth from pent-up demand from people still in many parts of the world that have not traveled over the past two years who want to catch up and who want to travel. And I think the, the even bigger direction of Airbnb, which is, um, which is the idea of the work anywhere movement or stay anywhere movement, that keeps growing and being strong. And so we know that there are so many Airbnbs, close to 50% of Airbnbs that are more than two weeks. But actually, long-term stays are just above 20% of all stays are more than one month. So is the disruption that Airbnb is doing much bigger than just hotels? And that is my thesis that I will expose in this channel in future videos, is that they are disrupting much more than, than just hotels. They may disrupt the classic 12-month lease that a landlord signs with tenants. They may disrupt that. This is the bet that you're making on Airbnb. It's a story of induced demand. It's much bigger than hotels. Uh, that's why I love this, this, this company so much. Uh, so in light of, you know, short term, everything's booked 
growth is so high, longer stays. They're hoping perhaps that the recession is going to lead to even more listings, but really there's just organic growth. And this is a company that has a product, a, a value oriented product that is so compelling that they're just not going to be able to meet all of the demand. This is the story of Airbnb. The demand is very, very, very high. Are they going to be able to meet that demand? Uh, well, yes, but we're going to have to wait 10 years and 50% growth year over year until they actually meet that demand because because the product is just extremely compelling for Airbnb. That is the new way that people decide to live and stay, I think, down the road. I think this is, this is much more than hotels. Uh, among Gen Z, among the younger millennials, this is... Uh, this is a cultural shift in how people live. Live, and so let's go. Let's go through the Q and A, which I did not like. This Q and A. All of the questions were short term. Everything was about the next quarter. Everything was about the next bookings. Sure, analysts are supposed to predict one year out, but the, the level of short termism is at peak right now, and it's really, really, really hard to listen to. Uh, a revolutionary CEO, 40 years old, 20 years ahead, compares the company to other revolutions like e revolutions like e-commerce and analysts are asking about, are you planning on doing layoffs because there's a recession? So anyways, I am a very long-term person. I think uh, I think there's a lot of long-term good stuff happening on for Airbnb, tremendous long-term prospects. And so just let me focus on, on, on some of that. Um, so consumers are not pulling back on travel. Travel is still very, very strong. And even if there is a recession, which there is, uh, the pent-up demand should abate the drop for a recession. Like there's still parts of the world, like Asia Pacific, that have not returned back to normal, that are that it works as pent-up demand. So so there is a lot of things going on as far as bookings. Bookings are not going now. Furthermore, work from home. Sure. Many companies are going back to the office, but a share of that work from home trend is here to stay. And when you work from home, that increases demand for travel for two main reasons. People, first of all, they want to get out of the house and they don't go to work anymore. So they want to change their environment. So they will often decide to mix travel as a family with travel for work. If you work from home, you can drive away two or three hours and decide to go quote unquote, walk from home, you know, three hours in a house that you rent on Airbnb. That is one of the major shift, I think, that is underlying the demand for Airbnb. When you walk from home, you can travel much more often because you don't need to be in the same location and people inherently want change, want to see new sceneries and they want to travel. Let me just go back to the to the next point that was prevalent for our call, which is Airbnb is a value product. Product. This product is all about value. Compare traveling as say a family of four, five or six. Compare the cost of traveling on an Airbnb versus the cost of traveling compared to the hotel. There is no comparison. A short-term rental of the house is much better and much cheaper. This is something that people forget, but it is a value product compared to what you get compared to a hotel. Airbnb is a value product. And the CEO is fully aware of that. When you have a value product, the product sells itself. It's one of his best cost type of products. You get a better service for a lower cost. And so these products tend to, to, to sell themselves. Um, CEOs working on a total upfront pricing where the website really prioritizes value in the search and how much money the total cost is going to save. And this is a pain point that I think Airbnb is trying to solve because just like the industry uh, of short-term stays has been plagued with issues of fees, tourist fees, parking fees, ancillary fees, cleaning fees, this is a this is a setup that has been inherited from the hotels. I mean, book a hotel, the price you see on the website is nowhere near the price you pay. This is something that Airbnb is trying to disrupt. They're trying to change the way stays are charged so that people 
know where, what is the upfront cost is, what the upfront pricing is, and that value is emphasized. And Airbnb, I, I maintain that it's a value product. It's a cheaper product. Guests become hosts and hosts become guests. It's a two-sided network. So this is the whole idea that growth is, for the most part, aside from marketing efforts and brand building, growth is, for the most part, organic. I.e., If you are satisfied with your several Airbnb stays that you may have done, you may have a secondary home somewhere that you may decide to turn into an Airbnb and vice versa. So guests can become hosts and hosts can become guests. And as I, as I um, showed in my last video on Airbnb, there is a, a cultural movement. There is a subculture movement that is all about Airbnb. And so when, when, you, when you try to tune into that cultural movement, and read what's happening on social media, what people are doing with Airbnbs, you realize that this is really a two-sided platform which will grow in tune. Guests attract hosts, and hosts attracts guests. It's, it's a virtuous loop. So I love that about Airbnb. Moving on. Pointing out demand where supply is available. So as the system of Airbnb as their website is booked and, and as their Q4 is booked and as going forward, there is a lot of demand because like I said, it is, it is a much cheaper product. It is a better product. So there's a lot of demand. So they want to build their recommender system and their AI and work on their AI so that really when you want to travel, it points you out to where supply is available. And also it, it, it points you to where it is the highest cost. And so I think, I think that is a big deal. In the past, if you wanted to travel somewhere, you had to think of a place, a city, and then you had, you had to search in that city. In the new era of AI, in the new era of the internet, it is the website, the platforms that knows you. And based on your browsing history, recommends something to you that it thinks you're likely to want. So it is all about induced demand. So I think a lot of places are going to get discovered. A lot of a lot of areas that wouldn't be on your radar when you're trying to travel will be recommended to you by Airbnb because Airbnb knows you and Airbnb knows your browsing behavior. So, so this business is much bigger than just competing with hotels. It's, it's about creating new demand, new opportunities, and surely they create new demand and new opportunities for travel as they are a value product. Question from an analyst about regulation, and this this is old news. I I think you know five years ago, that was a big thing. People were saying, oh, we need to to, to drive Airbnbs, you know, out of our cities. Airbnbs, uh, you know, they do a lot of issues, etc. Um, and and the CEO is really emphasizing that this is changing. And, and as a proof, the CEO highlights that they are collecting you know, close to $10 billion they have collected since they've done their changes on this uh, for local jurisdictions, you know, for local cities, for 30,000 local cities. And so what you find is that when you collect taxes for cities, cities are fine. Cities are fine with you setting up a business there if you pay the same taxes as, say, the hotels or, as, say, the other vacation companies have done. And so they, they fixed that and they pay taxes. And now cities are pretty much happy with them. Now now it's uh, it's more about the lobbying efforts from the hotel. But again, once you understand Airbnb is much more than hotels, uh, you understand that this is not a threat. Um, customers, the, the, the cohorts of customers come in waves at Airbnb. And they keep coming. And so the old customers stay with Airbnb and you keep adding new types of customers as these customers uh, can come from all walks of life. And you have very, very high-end Airbnbs. You have extremely low-cost Airbnbs where you literally go back to the history of the company and rent an air mattress in someone's living room. All sorts of travel can be accommodated by a, a, a platform like Airbnb, Airbnb, which has tremendous diversity uh, in what you can book. Airbnb, lastly, um, the two last points is, first of all, very interestingly, Airbnb has, has a side business for inspiration, which I think is very interesting. Uh, and this is all about building their brand. And so what you find is that a lot of people will actually go on Airbnb and they'll bookmark an Airbnb 
or they'll post it on social media for inspiration. Airbnb is a bit like a Pinterest for living, a Pinterest for how to set up your home, a Pinterest for how you organize your home um, and sharing it on social media, etc., 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 which I think is, is a very interesting point to think that the the website of Airbnb <laughs> Can be an inspiration. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, when you think about a company like, like Pinterest or Instagram, these are huge companies, huge social medias that have tremendous value just based on that web network. And when you think of Airbnb as a website that people just browse for inspiration, that people bookmark, if they like something on Airbnb, they've bookmarked it, they've shared it all across social media. They may decide someday to book it, and so that creates so much free marketing for Airbnb, and it induces new demand. Uh, once again, so the, the idea that the, the, the business is a, is a side inspiration website, like a Pinterest, is very, very fascinating to me because you would never hear Expedia being a, a side website, a social media inspiration business. Or you would never hear that from you know, Booking.com, Expedia, or even Hyatt. Uh, dot com. I mean, this this would make no sense, uh, but it makes a lot of sense for Airbnb. Very interesting. What is the future on this? Is there a future for advertising on this? Is there a future uh, partnerships with design magazines? Maybe. I don't know, but I think it's, it's a very interesting point. And, and lastly, as far as costs go for Airbnb, Airbnb is one of those companies that has not gone away from the walk from anywhere um, um, trend that we saw in 2020. They have not gone away from that. So they're still a fully remote workforce. Uh, actually, many of their, much of their top management team, their CEO actually live on Airbnb. And because they're a remote workforce, they can hire some of the best engineers out there who happen to be part of those who do not want to return to the office. There are people who simply do not want to return to the office. Uh, and so it's almost like you're getting a pay cut because you're limited to companies that guarantee you that you'll stay home. And Airbnb is one of these companies. So they actually have a competitive advantage on hiring because they can access a much bigger pool of potential engineers uh, than a company where to force engineers to go back to the office. And so I think this is a, perhaps an underrated um, advantage that Airbnb has in hiring. And this is... This is a, confirmed by Airbnb's profitability. Airbnb is extremely profitable. As I, as I noted in my last video, they have almost $8 million of revenue per employee. That's the profitability of Airbnb. Very efficient firm. Almost no assets. Very asset light. Very agile. And so I, I, have, a, uh, I, I have a big position in Airbnb. Uh, this is not investment advice, but I, I will keep buying shares. I will I will buy shares today because, you know, they're on sale. Um, and this is a company whose growth, I believe, will normalize at, at 50% for the next five to 10 years. And so you, you, you can imagine um, it beating the denominator. I think it will beat the denominator. Not investment advice. Thank you so much for watching my video. Uh, and I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.